Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the A for Ops seminar series. So today we have uh, with us Surush, who is a postdoc researcher at uh, Tepper School of Business at CMU. Uh, he works with uh, Professor Fatma Kilinch Karza. And uh, before that, he was a postdoc uh, in ETH Zurich, and he got his PhD from Ecole Polytechnic, working with uh, Daniel Kuhn and Mohajerin Esfahani. Um, he received EPFL thesis distinction for his PhD work. Uh, his research interests are broadly in optimization under uncertainty, stochastic and distributionally robust optimization problems, and statistical tools for data-driven decision-making problems. Uh, he works on uh, applications in machine learning, control, economics, and finance. And today he's going to talk to us about optimal transport in the semi-discrete setting. So, Sarush, the floor is yeah. yours. Thank you so much, Siva, for your nice introduction. <laughs> Uh, so today I'm going to speak about semi-discrete optimal transport problems, which involves the computation of optimal transport costs between a continuous distribution and a discrete distribution. So I will present some hardness results, then a regularization scheme, and after, the, uh, and after that I will present some iterative algorithms that can be used to efficiently solve this class of optimization problems. This is a joint work with my fantastic collaborators, Bauer Toshkoshen and Daniel Kuhn from EPFL. So, mm. it doesn't work. Sorry. No problem. Okay, let me use that. I think it should work. Ah, okay. So, let me give you a little bit uh, an overview of the history of optimal transport. So, optimal transport dates back to uh, Gosborg Monge in 1781, who introduces Monge optimal transport problem for civil engineering applications. Then the concept of optimal transport was used and applied by Hitchcock, Kontrovich, and Kupman for resource allocation problems. Due to their contributions, Kontrovich and Kupman received Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences in 1975. After that, Wasserstein and Brenier, among many other great mathematicians, show how optimal transport problem is linked with several different fields in mathematics, such as theory of partial differential equations, statistics, probability theory, functional analysis, and problems in fluid mechanics. And maybe surprisingly, optimal transport remains a highly active field in uh, mathematics, even after more than two centuries. Just as a proof, Cedric Villani in 2010 and Alessio Figali in 2018, received a Fields Medal in Mathematics, which is uh, regarded as the most prestigious award in the field. They both got this award because of their contributions in the field of optimal transport. But what is optimal transport, pro uh, uh, optimal transport problem? The goal of Monge optimal transport problem is to move uh, a pile of dirt from one location to another location in an optimal way. So intuitively, or in other way, we can actually uh, interpret the problem in terms of probability distribution. We would like to move unit probability mass from distribution mu to a distribution nu, so that the probability mass at any point in the support of uh, mu should be only transposed to one point in the support of the second distribution nu. So mathematically speaking, we would like to solve this minimization problem where the objective function is the expected total uh, transportation cost measured by a transportation function C. You take the expect expectation with respect to the first probability measure and you have the constraint that uh, mu, the second distribution should be pushed forward of the mu under a function T. So while Monge optimal transport problem has received several applications in engineering, it's not really computationally attractive. Why is it the case? The reason is that this minimization problem is non-convex because you introduce a nonlinear equality constraint. Other than that, uh, the Monge optimal transport problem can be easily infeasible, which means that the optimal transport cost between two relatively simple distributions can be plus infinity. Just let me give you an example. Let's say uh, mu is a one-point Dirac measure and mu is a two-point distribution. Then you won't be able to find a map that actually move unit probability mass from mu to single point in the distribution mu. Therefore, this minimization problem becomes infeasible and the optimal transport cost 
for these two simple distribution becomes plus infinity. In order to address these computational issues, uh, Kontrovich, Hitchcock, and uh, Koopman independently propose a convex relaxation of this problem, where they lift the decision space to the space of probability measure. And instead of looking at for a transportation map function t, they now look for a probability distribution part, which is also called transportation plan. Now, this actually allows them to move probability mass at any point x to several different points in the support of the second distribution. And by doing so, they always show that this minimization, uh, they show that this minimization problem is always feasible. Therefore, you actually avoid plus infinity for these type of problems. The other important thing for this class of optimization problem is that they show that uh, under some very minor technical condition on C, this minimization problem is guaranteed to be solved. But what I want to say here is that when you move from a function to a probability space, you take the expectation now with respect to the joint distribution pi, and you have the condition that uh, constraint that pi should have marginal mu and nu. So this problem is often referred as the monge kontrovich optimal transport problem or hitchcock koopman optimal transport problem. And from now on, whenever I say optimal transport, I will refer to this optimization problem. So in the most general case, when both distributions are continuous, this is an infinite dimensional linear program, which is uh, obviously intractable. In the simplest case, when both distributions are discrete with at most n atoms, uh, the optimal transport problem is reduced to a simple uh, finite dimensional linear program. And therefore you can use a uh, linear programming solver to solve this class of optimization problem exactly. Just to name a few, you can use simplex algorithm developed by Danzig, ellipsoid method developed by Kachian, interior point method developed by Karamakar to solve discrete optimal transport problem exactly. If you would like to get uh, faster algorithms, you can actually sacrifice exactness and look for approximate algorithm by using a method developed by Synchron so the method is essentially uh, penalizes the objective function with relative entropy. And they actually show that by doing this, uh, they can get a faster algorithm. So all in, all, all in all, what I wanted to say here is that discrete optimal transport problem with at most n atoms is polynomially term solvable in terms of atoms and the dimension of the problem. The focus of my talk is the semi-discrete case where there is one continuous distribution and one discrete distribution. The semi-discrete optimal transport problem has received uh, several applications in uh, engineering. However, its computational complexity is not very well understood. Just let me first give you some examples of the application of uh, these problems. It is uh, naturally appears in 3D morphing in computer graphics where you would like to interpolate between 3D objects so that the interpolation looks natural. It appears in resource allocation problems, as I mentioned in uh, economics. It appears also in uh, training generative models where you would like to sample from complex distributions. And it, it is also used uh, for uh, the problem of reconstruction of early universe from the current observation of, uh, of observation of position of uh, uh, galaxies uh, in the sky. It is also naturally appears in uh, fluid mechanic problems in the context of uh, uh, simulation of a, an incompressible fluid. So there are some there should be some videos here, but since I moved to PDF, you can see this uh, video. But I would like to uh, give a huge credit to Bruno Levy for uh, showing all these uh, nice videos. So let me go back to my point. While semi-discrete optimal transport problem has received several applications, 
uh, its computational complexity uh, is not uh, well studied in the literature. Therefore, the first uh, focus of my talk will be uh, will be um, trying to address this computational gap in the literature. In the second part of my talk, I will talk about a regularization scheme, which will be used to improve tractability of the problem. And at the end of my presentation, I will talk about some iterative algorithms that can be used to solve both a smooth optimal transport problem and the original semi-discrete uh, semi optimal transport problem. As we will see later in my talk, uh, these type of algorithms converges faster for a smooth optimal transport problem compared to the original ones. So I would like to pause for a few seconds here. If you have any questions from the first part, uh, just please let me know. Okay, very good. So let's uh, jump to the first uh, question. Uh, just uh, forgive me if I just uh, say something trivial in the next couple of slides. I, I thought maybe it's good to uh, review a little bit uh, about different concept of uh, computational complexity classes. So uh, there are uh, there are many type of different computational complexity classes, but I will introduce two of them here. The first type of computational complexity involves decision problems where uh, you would like to provide a simple yes or no to a question. A problem is called P if it is solvable in polynomial with a deterministic Turing machine or just the computers that we use nowadays. A problem is called MP if it is solvable in polynomial time with a non-deterministic Turing machine or equivalently verifiable in polynomial time uh, with a deterministic Turing machine. The hardest problem in class MP are called Sharpie complete. For example, integer programs are generally Sharpie, uh, sorry, MP complete. Uh, and at the top of hierarchy, we have MP hard problems, uh, which may not be even solvable in polynomial time, even with a non-deterministic Turing machine. Just perhaps the most famous example here is the uh, halting problem, where I give you a piece of code, and the question is that whether the code runs forever or not. The second uh, class of computational uh, complexity uh, involves a counting problem, where instead of providing a simple yes or no to a question, you would like to know how many instances provide a yes answer. Again, a problem is called, a counting problem is called P, if it is solvable in polynomial time with a, a deterministic Turing machine, sharp P, if it is solvable in polynomial time with a non-deterministic Turing machine. The hardest problem in class Sharpie are called Sharpie complete. For instance, computation of a permanent of a binary matrix is known to be Sharpie complete. And at the top of hierarchy, we have Sharpie hard problems, uh, where the most famous examples for people in a stochastic programming literature uh, community is uh, the computation of volume of knapsack polytope. Now, with this uh, short introduction, I'm ready to uh, present the first uh, result of my presentation. So we proved that the computation of uh, semi-discrete optimal transport cost is sharply hard, even in simplest cases. So the proof is based on a reduction from a known sharply hard problem to the problem of computation of semi-discrete optimal transport cost. I'm not going to, uh, through all the details in the proof, but I would like to highlight some of the key steps here. In particular, we consider perhaps the simplest possible scenario when the continuous distribution is a uniform distribution over unit hypercube, and the discrete distribution is a two-point uh, parametric distributions uh, parameterized by some parameter alpha between zero and one, uh, and its atom is located at the origin and some point uh, at the positive orthant. So we first show that uh, minimizing optimal transport between mu and nu alpha in terms of the parameter alpha is a convex univariate optimization problem. Therefore, provided that we could compute optimal transport cost between mu and nu alpha in polynomial time, 
we would be able to find the minimizer of this minimization problem in polynomial time using a, a zero order method like bisection algorithm or uh, binary search method. On the other hand, we show that the minimizer of this optimization problem is equivalent to volume of knapsack polytope, a quantity which is known to be sharply hard to compute or even sharply hard to approximate. Therefore, we have constructed a polynomial time Turing reduction from the problem of computation of volume of knapsack polytope to the problem of computation of uh, semi-discrete optimal transport cost between mu and mu alpha. Therefore, we proved that uh, semi-discrete optimal uh, transport problems are sharp -yard. So now that we see the complexity result, I think it's important to know why we get uh, sharp yardness. Uh, a dual reformulation of optimal uh, transport problem in the semi-discrete case uh, requires uh, the evaluation of uh, um, volume of uh, several different polytopes. Just in order to compute uh, the volume of these polytopes, you have to compute an integral with respect to a non-smooth integrand. So this function is actually one when you are inside the polytope and zero when you are outside the polytope. So typically in numerical like, uh, integration, when the integrand function is non-smooth, you would get some sort of interactability and computational uh, hardness. And in the case of semi-discrete optimal transport problem, this leads to the sharp hardness. Just a remedy which is proposed in numerical integration literature to improve tractability is just to replace this non-smooth function with some smooth approximate function. So in the second part of my talk, I will tell you how you can actually find a systematic uh, way to generate a smooth functions. Now, let me also tell you what, uh, what is the meaning of uh, our sharp hardness result and what is the implications. So we proved that computation of semi-discrete optimal transport cost is sharp hard, which means that if uh, the two distributions are representable by n bits uh, in the computer, then there is no algorithm that can return the optimal transport cost to within accuracy epsilon in time polynomial and n and logarithm of one over epsilon. However, our complexity uh, theory does not rule out uh, the existence of approximate algorithm that can return an approximate solution in time polynomial in the input size and also polynomial in one over epsilon. So in the third part of my talk, I will actually show you some algorithms uh, that actually satisfy this sort of complexity uh, bounds. So this concludes the first part of uh, my presentation. So I would like to pause a little bit here. If you have any question about the first part, uh, please let me know. So sharp hard means that it's for the exact solution, right? There's no epsilon. Mm -hmm. um, so very good question. So here, so here, uh, what I showed you is for exact computation. In the paper, we also uh, extend it for uh, approximate solution as well. Yeah, but but uh, the it should be exponentially small. Yeah, got it. Thanks. No problem. Any other question? Yes. Actually, what's the intuition for actually converting a computation class of counting problem to the transportation problem? I'm just wondering on the intuition. Yeah, very good point. So the intuition that we had in the beginning is that uh, the dual semi-discrete optimal transport problem as I also show you later, was an instance of a, a stochastic programming problems. So for a stochastic programming problems, we know that uh, uh, some sharp hardness result exists. And actually the reduction from that problem, uh, sorry, the reduction that they use is the reduction from the problem of computation of volume of knapsack polytope 
to the problem of uh, computation of uh, solving uh, stochastic uh, programming problems. So this actually motivates us to, in a way, link uh, and come up with, a, with an idea that uh, links optimal transport problem to the computation of volume of knapsack volume. Yeah. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. So any other question? Yeah, okay, very good. Well, let me start the second part of my talk, which is about uh, a, smooth, a smooth optimal transport uh, problem. So <clears throat> to make op semi-discrete optimal transport problems smooth, uh, we need actually to apply Kontrovich duality theorem. By applying this theorem, one can easily show that the semi-discrete optimal transport problem in the dual space is equivalent to a, a stochastic convex optimization problem where the decision variable phi, sorry, is a vector in Rn. N is the number of atoms of the discrete distribution and you take the expectation with respect to the continuous distribution. Denoting the function inside the expected uh, expectation operator by uh, phi c, psi c, which is uh, often referred as a c transformation, one can easily see that the objective function is concave, but it's not smooth. And the reason that it's not smooth is that because the max operator just uh, ruins the smoothness. So the smooth approximation of max function with uh, partition function or soft max is widely used in machine learning literature. Uh, on the other hand, partition function is uh, used uh, in economics in the context of uh, discrete choice models. A discrete choice model representing the behavior of an agent, uh, uh, sorry, representing the behavior of a population aims to predict uh, choice probabilities among different items. In the random utility model, uh, the difference between individuals is modeled by an additive noise. And the value of the whole population is evaluated by the expected value of maximal utility. So different choice of noise distribution leads to different choice models. For instance, if the noise follow, uh, if noise follows uh, product, product of global distribution, uh, we recover multinomial logit model. And in this case, we know that the value of the population, this expected maximal utility, is equivalent to a quantity which happens to be the same as partition function. This observation essentially motivates us to come up with some uh, a smooth approximation of max uh, operator using a randomization idea. And by the way, this function is obviously smooth in UI because uh, it's actually infinite uh, many times the uh, differential. So in particular, we consider ambiguous discrete choice models, just a generalization to a multinomial logit model where the distribution of noise zi is assumed to be ambiguous, but following some structure. So we consider the scenario where we would like to maximize the expected maximal utility over all distributions belonging to a set. So in this presentation, I will use the fresh ambiguity set, which contains all probability distributions with known marginals. So the marginal information is just coded uh, with uh, the function fi, which, the, which is the cumulative uh, distribution functions of the ith uh, axis. Just maybe surprisingly, um, Natarajan and ho his co author in 2009 show that this maximization problem over probability measures is equivalent to a regularized linear program where the regularization term is a function of the cumulative distribution functions fi. Sorry. So we show that this function as the implicit function uh, is actually uh, a smooth in the parameter ui as long as this uh, cumulative functions, cumulative distribution functions are continuous. 
And therefore, instead of taking max over n alternatives in the definition of a C transfer function, we now use uh, the, the, the idea of uh, um, ambiguous uh, discrete choice models. Now, replacing psi C with psi, sorry, psi C with psi C bar in the definition of our semi discrete optimal transfer problem, we will end up with the concept of a smooth uh, semi discrete optimal transfer problem. And again, why is it a smooth? It is a smooth whenever uh, the, the marginal distributions uh, are continuous. Now, using this result, uh, we prove that uh, a smoothing the optimal transport problem in the dual space. Just remember that here I have, uh, I make this optimal transport problem smooth in the dual space is equivalent to uh, regularizing the original optimal transport problem in the primal space. Just to give more details uh, for this uh, result, we show that if the fresh ambiguity set mu is parameterized by some uh, marginal ambiguity, uh, mar uh, sorry, marginal distribution with cumulative distribution function fi, that themselves is parameterized by a function f and the discrete distribution nu i, then these equivalents hold and you can compute the f divergence function but from the generating function f, f sorry. Just this result is not uh, so important. The important thing is that you can now show uh, if you consider different ambiguities that you can recover a uh, well-known regularization uh, method in the literature. So if the ambiguity set contains a distribution with marginal exponential distribution, you can actually uh, recover cool back liber divergence regularized problem. If it is uniform distribution, you, uh, you recover chi divergence uh, optimal, uh, regularized optimal transport problem. Pareto distribution leads to the solis divergence regularized problem and T distribution leads to Tikhorov of uh, regularization. So all in all, what I wanted to show you here is that uh, by smoothing dual problems, you can get uh, regularization in the primal space. And uh, you have also provided, we also provided a probabilistic interpretation for regularized method, but in the dual space. So this will conclude the second part of my uh, presentation. Just if you have any questions, just please let me know. Yeah, sure. So you mentioned log sum exponential as an approximation of the max for the dual problem. So if I did the log sum exponential, what will be the corresponding regularizer? Uh, primal? Uh, it, it, it will, it will be, uh, so just log X will be just Shannon entropy. Oh, uh, okay. So, so here, here. So here, if instead of this term, you use Shannon entropy, you will get, you will get log sum X. Okay, and in the primal problem, what regularizer does it correspond to? Uh, it will be, it will be instead of F divergence here, uh -huh. you will have Shannon entropy. Oh, yeah. Sure. Thanks. No problem. So, okay. So let me just move to the last part of my presentation. Yeah, sure. So I didn't follow how you got the dual formulation for the Wasserstein with the phi. I, I, I don't understand what the phi is. Yeah, sure. Here you mean? Yes, yes. Okay, so just remember that the minimi the, the optimal transport problem was introduced in the, uh, in the, what was a minimization problem, right? So once you dualize that minimization problem, uh, you would get uh, just, okay, let me do it like this. Uh, so you have a minimization problem and you have two constraints. Let me go here. So, so you have a minimization problem, you have two constraints. So the first constraint is that marginal of pi should be mu, new. The second constraint is marginal of, uh, second marginal of pi should be new. 
Now, if, when you dualize it, you will get two functions, right? But the, the thing is, in the semi-discrete case, one of these uh, uh, one of these distribution is discrete. Therefore, instead of looking for a function, you only need to look for values of the function in those uh, points. And since you have only n of them, the dimension of that uh, value should be in Rn. And the, the other function, I mean, by optimality condition, you know, you can actually show that the other function, the, the other function that appears uh, as the Lagrange dual multiplier will be max of this uh, quantity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yes. Hi, can you explain um, the um, different con distribution correspond to different divergence? Like, can you explain again the part for me? Okay, sure. So just remember that I have this uh, C transformation and I replace this C transform uh, with this uh, objective function. Now, what I'm saying is that you see there is an ambiguity set gamma here. So I'm saying that if this ambiguity set contains uh, all distributions with some marginals that satisfies this uh, equality, then by dualizing, by dualizing this optimization problem, you would get an optimization problem in this. So the key idea here is that how you basically, I mean, the key idea of the proof is essentially to dualize again this problem to go back to this. I don't know if I answer your question or not. Yeah, but like later on, like you have a slide where like you have uh, different distributions also in uh -huh. different divisions. Okay, I see your point now. So. Uh, here, here, uh, sorry. So if you have exponential function, so this fi will be an exponential function again. fi inverse will be a logarithmic function. And when you take the logarithm, something like pullback liber divergence pop up. Yeah. For, for others, it's also the same thing. Any other question? Okay, very good. Now, let me just uh, conclude my talk uh, by presenting some algorithms to you. So just remember that I introduced the whole idea of uh, a smooth optimal transport to get more tractability, right? But uh, so far, we don't know if uh, smoothing the optimal transport problem would lead to faster algorithm or not. And in the third part of my talk, I will actually show you that the answer to this question is yes. So just recall that uh, the dual uh, semi-discrete optimal transport problem was an instance of a stochastic convex optimization problems. Traditionally, uh, a stochastic uh, programming uh, problems uh, is approximately solved by average a stochastic gradient descent algorithm. The algorithm is uh, very simple. It all requires uh, a so-called stochastic uh, gradient oracle, which essentially samples uh, one point from uh, the continuous distribution and evaluate the gradient of the function inside the expected expectation operator with respect to the decision variable phi. Then the algorithm simply updates the current solution using the gradient updates times the step size. And at the, the end of T iteration, uh, it outputs uh, an average of all the points that pass uh, and observed so far. So the convergence rate of these simple algorithms uh, depends on the choice of a step size which itself is a function of uh, properties of the objective function. So just let me again review some of the 
uh, definitions, let's say, uh, that we will use. Uh, just our Lipschitz, if it satisfies this inequality, we call it L smooth. The function is called L smooth. If its gradient is uh, L Lipschitz, it's called uh, a strongly convex if it satisfies uh, this inequality. And uh, something which is a little bit different from the uh, classic uh, notion of self-concordant is uh, what we have here as M generalized self-concordant. And it just essentially says that the third order derivative uh, along some line should uh, be upper bounded by the second order derivative and the norm of uh, the difference of uh, the two points. Just uh, in contrast to the classic self-concordant uh, um, definition, which was used uh, to analyze the uh, uh, interior point method, there is no power three divided by two here. Now, it is known that the optimal convergence rate of average stochastic gradient descent for Lipschitz function is in order of one over square root of t. A smoothness actually does not bring any acceleration. Actually, Seboyov in 2003 shows that uh, this rate of O of one over square root of t is actually tight, and there exists a function that achieves this rate. Uh, Acceleration is possible if the objective function is strongly convex. And on top of that, the uh, uh, decisions, uh, the feasible set phi uh, should be bounded. And uh, prior to a few years ago, I think uh, most of the people thought that a strong convexity is uh, an essential property to achieve acceleration. Uh, and Francis Bock in 2013 actually showed that as long as the function is uh, generalized self-concordant, even when psi phi is uh, optimized over the whole space, you can achieve uh, acceleration without having a strong convexity. So let me go back to the semi-discrete optimal transport problem. Uh, so recall that uh, in the dual space, we had a maximization problem. And we can actually rewrite it as a minimization problem where the objective function capital H will be the C transform minus a linear function. So I showed you that the uh, convergence rate of the average stochastic gradient uh, descent algorithm depends on the properties of the function H. Therefore, it is important to know what are the properties of the a smooth uh, C transform function. So we prove that uh, as long as the cumulative distribution function fi are continuous, uh, the C transfer function is guaranteed to be one Lipschitz. When uh, the function, the cumulative distribution functions are L Lipschitz, we can show that uh, the smooth C transfer function is L smooth. And uh, the more interesting part is here, uh, and it says that if the second order derivative of the uh, cumulative distribution functions divided by the first order derivative uh, is bounded by some uh, constant, uh, the, the smooth C transfer function is also M generalized self concordant. Just, just let me give you uh, an example here. Uh, for example, when we have uh, exponential function, this will be an exponential function, exponential divided by exponential. Uh, will cancel out and you will get a constant here. So now you may think that, okay, I can use uh, the existing result to just show the convergence rate of uh, average stochastic gradient descent algorithm. This could be the case if you would be able to compute the gradient of C transfer function exactly. But recall that in order the, 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 the but recall that the smooth C transfer function was an implicit function. It was equivalent to the optimal value of optimization problem. Therefore, uh, when we compute uh, gradients of this function, there will be always some numerical errors. And uh, it's important to know if these numerical errors uh, just uh, uh, would fail the convergence rate of the algorithm or not. And uh, this actually, the last uh, result of my presentation, we show that if the error 
uh, at iteration t is in order of one over a uh, square root of t. And if you choose the step size uh, in the order of one over a square root of capital T, then you can actually recover uh, the existing optimal convergence rate without having access to the exact uh, gradients. Now I would like to just to conclude my talk by showing you a simple uh, simulation. So we consider two optimal transport uh, problems, two semi-discrete optimal transport problems. So the first one is the non-regularized semi-discrete optimal transport problems. And uh, for this problem, it is easy to see that uh, the objective function is uh, one Lipschitz. Therefore, uh, the, the theoretical convergence rate from the theory I showed you will be uh, order of one over a square root of t. So this plot essentially shows that the theoretical rate matches the uh, empirical rate for this problem. So for the regularized entropic uh, uh, optimal transport problem, uh, we can actually show that the objective function is one self-concordant. Therefore, the theoretical convergence rate would be one over t. And again, we also realize, uh, we also, observe that uh, in the simulation, we get this pass rate. So all in all, what I want to conclude from this slide is that we observe that by regularizing the problem or equivalently do, uh, smoothening the dual problem, we obtain faster algorithms. And this uh, concludes my talk. Um, so the algorithms here are for semi-discrete OT or for OT? Uh, it's for semi-discrete, yeah. Okay. So, so the, the reason is that you need to optimize over a finite space. Yeah. So uh, what happened in like general continuous OT? Um, do you think like algorithms like stand variation or radiant descent can work? There are, there are. But the thing is uh, most of them cannot be really implemented in a computer. At the end of the day, you have to discretize it. Okay. So, and okay. once you discretize it, it goes to the same discrete optimal transport problem again. So some, so in practice, like most of them, like will go back to either discrete or semi-discrete. Exactly, exactly. Thank, Thank you. you. No problem. Yeah, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, and uh, I think in uh, in this talk, you mentioned there are many regularization schemes for optimal transport. Can you comment uh, which kind of regularization mm -hmm. works better in okay. practice? Very, very good question. So it depends on what type of applications you have in mind. So just let me go back to this slide maybe. And I have this linear programming formulation here. So just when you don't have any regularization, the optimizer of this problem is most of the time sparse because it just assigned one to the maximum element and zero to the other. But as soon as you introduce some regularization, the, the this, uh, optimizer of this optimization problem become non-sparse, non-sparse. For example, when you have Kurback library divergence, it's a worst case. So it's not even a sparse. It's always a, some of all the values are non-zero. In some applications in computer graphics, it's important. And, and by the way, so the optimizer of this optimization problem gives you the derivative of the C transfer function, which is used in the algorithm. So in some algorithms, in some applications, it's important to have a sparse uh, derivatives because they look for a sparse solution in the end of the uh, in the uh, in the end of uh, after you solve the optimization problem. Therefore, uh, depends on the applications and what you want to gain. If you want to get uh, fast algorithms, perhaps uh, Kullback Liver divergence is the best. But if you want to work on uh, applications that uh, requires the sparsity, you have to consider different sort of regularizations.
Uh, okay, uh, and my another question is that the uh, dual reformulation of Wasserstein DLO also involves inner maximization and it's, it's promising to extend your approach, say smoothing the C transform to smoothing the dual reformulation of Wasserstein DLO. Uh, this is also possible, of course. The, the, it, it's, it's, it's possible, but I would say that the dual reformulation would be more uh more complex so in terms of uh, solving it so you would be able to obtain a, a convex reformulation of the problem but once you want to solve it with a computer the implementation will be a little bit more challenging compared to the original one yeah thank yeah. you thank you hi um, when you say semi-discrete mm -hmm. optimal transport, you know the number of atoms that you have in your semi-discrete distribution? Yeah. What if this is a decision variable? Like, what if I tell you, you have to move it to a finite number of things, mm -hmm. but I don't tell you how many you have to figure it out? Mm -hmm. So what you're asking is more like a scenario reduction problem, right? Let's say you have... Or more visually, you had a picture where you move, you were moving a continuous distribution to a, you had a finite set of circles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your point. So, so, so you're, you're assuming is... that you know, you know how many of these red dots you're going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Oh, I, I just let me find it. Mm -hmm. uh, or you had it a little bit before. Um, but anyway, what if I, what if I don't know? Mm -hmm. how many of these atoms I have beforehand? What if I can have anywhere between zero and a number and I have to figure it out? Mm -hmm. How would that be, fit within your framework? Yeah, sure. So what you're asking is that, uh, if I understand correctly, so just please uh, correct me if it's not. Uh, so you would like to just minimize the location, minim okay, find the best locations, and also the numbers that minimizes uh, the optimal transport between a mu distribution and a discrete distribution with those locations, right? So this is more or less like clustering problem, more or less. Um, so for example, if I give you, if I tell you I give you N locations, then um, essentially the points that you find will be the solutions of a K nearest neighbor problem, N nearest neighbor problem. And uh, depending on the transportation function C, but in some cases, uh, this is the case. So what you're asking is uh, how I can actually find the number of clusters for a data set. So th this is not uh, what we could ag address in our work, uh, but it's uh, actually a very interesting uh, question. There are some results connecting these questions to some co-positive approach, but uh, I'm not aware of uh, uh, the technicality and the methods that they use there. Thanks. No problem. I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. So uh, your punchline at the very end was that uh, by doing regularization, you can speed up the convergence. Yep. But then my question is, uh, by doing regularization, you change the problem, right? Yeah, yeah very good. So you're only doing... Uh, yeah, so right. in the plot, when you had this uh, non-regularized yeah. and regularized, mm -hmm. this is not apples to apples comparison. They're not... It's not, yeah. Very good point, very good point. But at the same time, so let me go to this slide. At the same time, you can actually quantify what is the... So just without this term, you would have the original problem. Okay. So you will be able to uh, characterize what is the difference between the optimal value of this problem and the original problem. Therefore, the algorithm at the end is, let, let's say this the difference is delta. So it will be delta off from the optimal solution. And for some cases, we can show that this delta will be independent of the uh, dimension and also the other parameters in the problem. But can we, can we do more? So suppose I tell you that uh, I want to solve the original uh, OT problem mm -hmm. with epsilon accuracy. Mm -hmm. 
can you make sure your regularization is with an epsilon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, yeah. Okay. so you can actually use this bound to design a function f that gives you uh, these sort of guarantees. But there is a catch here. The catch here is that that parameter for sure appears in the uh, constant of uh, self-concordant, mm -hmm. and therefore, therefore here, when we have uh, this theorem, some of the constants here depends on that parameter. So initially you said that um, um, when you gave an overview of your talk, mm -hmm. you said that uh, you're going to present an algorithm that gives uh, uh, O of poly n and uh, poly 1 over epsilon. Yeah. So that poly 1 over epsilon is for the original problem, not the modified. Yeah, problem. true, true, true. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, 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 true, true. So uh, yes, um, I wasn't super precise here. Uh, but as I said, so you can actually quantify what is the difference and Correct. with that. By doing all of that, you'll essentially get a poly one over epsilon. Yeah. It's not one over epsilon or one over epsilon square no, no. because they're yeah, all No, no, no. One over, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. uh, one more mm -hmm. clarification sure. question. So in the final theorem, you had an epsilon T. That epsilon T is basically the accuracy with which you solve the inner yeah, sure. optimization yeah. problem? Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 exactly. So okay. this will be the accuracy of... Uh, this problem, essentially. Right. This max uh, that I showed you. So there is one other thing that I forgot to mention. So th uh, this is a regularized linear program, but essentially you don't really need to solve a regularized uh, linear program. You can rewrite uh, this maximization problem as a uh, root finding problem over a single scalar. Therefore, by just using Newton method or any other method, you can uh, solve this uh, maximization problem very efficiently. And one other thing is that, for example, if Kullback library convergence appears here, we already know what is the optimal value of this uh, problem analytically. Yeah. So I was going to ask, uh, what is the time complexity of solving this problem uh, with yeah. an epsilon t? So you're saying that's logarithmic? Yeah, it's it's oh. yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Okay. It's it's in order of n or n times log n. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. There, there was one, two other questions. Uh, I, I want to ask like a follow up with, uh, from his question. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, is there some kind of sampling complexity with respect to the uh, number of n, the number of atoms? Uh, like, for example, like um, in uh, discrete OT, right? I mm -hmm. think there's like a result on like, um, you need um, how many um, uh, ends uh, to, to approximate mm -hmm. the true OT mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. I think the complexity is like one over N, something mm -hmm. like that. So is there something similar to similarly discrete OT? Uh, very good question. So let me go to this slide. Okay, sorry, I went wrong. So here, so what I can say here is that uh, this complexity result is uh, the complexity in terms of uh, changing the dimension, the, uh, the ambient dimension of these uh, random variables. It's not about the number of the samples n. So this is a fixed value, and we don't have any result on uh, how this problem uh, actually look like in terms of computational complexity as a function of n. So in the problem that we define, n is fixed. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have an answer for your question. Yeah. Um, one, one extra question. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, is there any uh, algorithm for like unbalanced optimal transport but oh. semi-discrete? Uh, very good point. So I would say that essentially if you get a stochastic programming reformulation of the problem in the dual space, if you have some maximization problem over a vector in RN, then you would be able to solve it, uh, approximately solve it with a, uh, a stochastic gradient descent algorithm. And when I'm saying solving it, it's actually very... Uh, yeah, what I'm saying, the claim is not entirely correct. So the type of guarantees that we have is uh, in this form. 
which says that uh, the expected value of uh, the e threads that you find, uh, an average of the e threads you find, minus h of a, uh, h star, is in order of one over a square root of t or t. But there, there is one important thing. To compute h itself, you need also to take an expectation, right? So I'm, I'm not saying that this result is not useful. What I'm saying is that these are useful if you can also take this uh, expectation in order of t as well. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thanks. You you presented the uh, algorithms based on the SGD. So mm -hmm. it's first order, right? Yep. I'm from interior points, so I'm going to ask you, can you do second order? Um, most likely, yes. Uh, why I'm saying that, uh, the reason I'm saying that is that uh, uh, you can actually have some self-concordance property. It's not uh, the exactly uh, the exact self-concordance property used uh, in the interior point methods, but there are actually some papers that show that by using this notion of, sorry, this notion of, this notion of self-concordant, Newton methods uh, in the non-stochastic case uh, still converge. In the stochastic case, there is I'm not aware of such a result. Yeah. No problem. Okay, let's all thank Sorush again, and thanks for all the great questions.